Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live on the road at MongoDB Local in New York City. You can hear the excitement around it. We are in the middle of an awesome show. Daniel, how are you doing? I feel like I'm at a startup, and we're just surrounded by developers yeah. building really cool products, services on the Mongo platform, MongoDB platform, Yep. and they're doing it here. Um, in New York City at the Javits Center, but we just got done with the keynote. We heard from the company's CEO, Chief right. Product Officer, a number of the company's customers, um, and there was launches, there was right. uh, announcements, there was customer stories. That's Pat, right. It had all the parts and all the pieces required to make for a good event, and like I said, you really can here. This right. place is buzzing. There's sessions going on all around us, and they're all full. Five stages, too. Five stages. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, big picture, I think my biggest takeaways are growth, growth, and more growth through either new verticals or, or new products. And it's funny, Dan, you know, having sat in so many briefings that we've done in the past about different types of technologies, the whole simplicity message uh, came through as well, which was essentially, hey, as opposed to having all these point products for your data, uh, use us, one API, right, one format, and you're good to go. So it's, it's so interesting how something from this event would remind me, but I think that's just, I think simplification, if it's nothing else, is one of the big trends out there. Yeah, I think MongoDB is, focused on two areas. One's really well understood, and that's yeah. the developer. And with the advent and now the accelerated pace of generative AI, we're sort of seeing this inflection about, well, how is code going to be developed? And you know, they even called a uh, hugging face the, the GitHub of open LLMs. And so you've got this side of things, but then you also have the, the boardroom initiatives that are being brought to light. And the boardroom initiatives are first about AI for efficiency, meaning how do we put all of our data to work yes. to make our companies more efficient in every department? I was talking to you about a tweet the other day I saw from Jay Cal from the All In podcast, Jason Calcanis, and he, he tweeted something out about Uber basically removing a huge percentage of its HR workforce because of generative AI. And so you start hearing stories like this and the initial sort of reaction is that we're going to be building technology and applications to sort of displace. But I think that that's the early reaction. I think it's about sort of uh, the metaphor is when you want to do a great rehab on a house, you tear it down to the studs. And I think what we're seeing now is with applications, with the complete, the stream processing, vector search, search, and by the way, encryption for security, you're seeing a very holistic solution that enables data to be utilized by developers to build applications that streamline functions across business. So a long way to get to an outcome is businesses are saying, how do we get more efficient first with apps and developers, and then how do we scale rapidly the way we did in the first wave of big data, but took many, many years, this is happening much faster. Yeah, so I want to hit on this growth uh, category uh, with the company, and we're going to be doing a lot of deep dives on the technology and customers in the other video. But you know, let's just break this down here. So there's a lot of different ways you can do search, primarily with text. And the, I think the biggest announcement here at the show was the addition of vector search, and that gives you the ability to work on data, whether it's images, videos, songs, uh, uh, things even like code that, by the way, that enables you to do generative AI and LLMs. So I think that's a, a huge growth uh, path for them, and they're increasing their SAM by bringing this out. And I loved the example that was put on stage, which was essentially an industrial IoT uh, um, application where data coming off a car, likely streaming data, so maybe it was a twofer, uh, was being pulled in and activated on to be able to do better ma predictive maintenance uh, on it. 
Uh, one thing in general I really appreciated uh, because I'm not a programmer and I'm not a developer is that they kicked it off talking about the mission of the company but also giving a very important head nod to my favorite topic, the hybrid multi-cloud. And literally the first three slides of the entire presentation showed how MongoDB uh, went across AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, on-prem, and Edge. And I think that's super important to always keep in mind as we're moving forward and it supports that simplicity factor that IT wants. They're sick of having different stacks literally for every cloud. And MongoDB has a solution for that. It's called Atlas. So let's move this from the D suite to the C suite. Yeah. You know, in the developer suite, what we saw today was a, a set of tools that continues to go horizontal and vertical yes. to solve the complex ways that developers have to deal with data, deal with search, deal with the stream processing, but what we're also seeing is, is outcomes, okay? So you mentioned that automotive repair, and the outcome that was so interesting to me was, it was able to take a vector like sound, okay? And a vehicle that has a certain issue makes a certain sound, one that the average ear of a technician probably couldn't easily identify. But using vector and using MongoDB, what the company was able to do was it could listen to an engine, it could diagnose an issue, and then go across the manuals of all these different parts and pieces and vehicles, and then use and add generative capabilities built right into the tool to then let the technician know their exact course of action. Now, kind of makes me think of some of the mixed reality tools where they had the little dotted lines, but now it's creating generative. And this flows up, you, you talked about huge reductions in time spent, huge reductions in costs, wrong fixes, wrong parts. You start to see these types of things in dealing with customer service issues or dealing with uh, medical, with, with diagnosis, how this stuff could translate to other applications that could work across other industries that could become really prolific for driving business, lowering costs, improving customer experiences. And that was what I really saw, Pat, in this whole presentation was this is developer actions that yield boardroom improved results. Yeah, it's definitely operating on multiple levels. And by the way, I think the C-suite is also very interested in costs and uh, it, is, it is never a, hey, do whatever it takes and whatever it costs. And I, I'm thinking that MongoDB is serving up a twofer here, which is, hey, we can help you with all these digital transformation projects you have that involve data, and by the way, any type of data, OLTP, time series, text, analytics, stream, vector search, uh, under one vendor. Uh, and uh, you can do that with one API, which should be able to save costs when it comes to, to development. I also noticed that they're starting to flavor in a cross-platform uh, security, right? Uh, as well, again, with the ability to reduce the amount of vendors and reduce the amount of cost. I need a little bit more research on the security side, but, but again, it's very much seeming to me like this could be a, a twofer satisfying both sides of the house. And we don't see that that often. Usually it's, hey, a message that is targeted directly at the C-suite or targeted directly at the D-suite. Yeah, well, you, you saw in the security area that they're addressing kind of those, almost, it almost kind of had flavors of confidential computing to me though, of addressing those three areas, right? You got the data at rest, data in motion, and in use. And in use is always the, the problem. Yes. So the way it's able to utilize without decrypting was really powerful knowing how much data is being created. And, and in these applications, you're often talking so much about real time. Yes. And so, that definitely caught my attention. The other thing was probably just getting down to the applications that are going to drive the immediate uh, development opportunities. You saw one of the examples on stage, Ada, uh, talking about 85% uh, of you know, improvement in customer resolution. Um, 
really important number, but CX is the is actually the first killer app for generative AI. Right. CX it's the ability for you know a the customer data to be accessed for resolutions to be driven. I don't think people think a lot about MongoDB as the enabler of that, but that really is, when it comes to building the app, sitting it on top of all these different data, transaction, operational layers, and being able to then finally generate an outcome that's, hey, faster customer service, getting them the right answer in the right channel, generatively, very powerful. Yeah. Hey, I want to hit on two more areas of growth. I thought you know, growth was a big theme of the company here. I think investors should be interested in that. I think uh, CXOs who want to consolidate vendors should be interested in this. Uh, one other area was a relational migrator. Hey, the great folks at MongoDB are going to enable you to blow the bolts on your current relational database provider. There are many of them, so think SQL, no SQL, and come over to them and they're going to help you not only bring over the data, but also uh, the application. So again, another area of growth. We have new products to increase the SAM. Uh, we have new, uh, I would call it share shifting to increase the SAM. Then the final piece of growth that I saw uh, was getting going vertical. Now there weren't a lot of details yet, but, and this is classic growth mode, right? At some point, you have to start going vertical because uh, of the complexity and nuances that go on with a certain market. And what the company announced today that it was using financial services is the first vertical that it's going to go after. So you can imagine, right? Uh, a sales force, uh, systems engineers who understand this and likely some modifications and tweaks to get more vertical. And, you know, again, the ability to drive more revenue and drive growth. I mean, not that the company needs help doing that, because quite frankly, they're throwing up some pretty big numbers if you look at the past uh, few quarters. Yeah, the last quarter was indicative of the momentum. I think it was very important that MongoDB was able to attach itself to this AI trend. And unlike a lot of what I kind of would call AI washing right now, the company has a real claim to make. Yes. These applications that are going to be utilizing generative capabilities need to have this data layer well-designed, orchestrated, multi-cloud enabled, secure. Yes. Um, and then of course, you know, using vector and stream gives that both real time and the ability to deal with complex variable uh, data archetypes. And so this leads to the growth that I think a lot of people were long waiting for. MongoDB's first wave was in the apps era and right. it became hyper relevant in the apps era. The generative AI era is going to create the second wave of a requirement for its technology, Pat, and I think that was the message I really came away with is there's growth, growth, and more growth in its future. Having said that, would like to hear more declaratively about the TAM opportunity. Would like to understand more about net revenue expansion, attach rate, will customers pay more, which has been an important uh, demarcation between the companies that have done really well in this AI boom and every other. But my early indicators, the way I see it from, the, from what I've heard so far, what I've seen so far is this is one of the companies that maybe quietly, but shouldn't surprise anybody that is going to be a winner of this AI transformation we're undergoing. Yeah, they definitely sent some cookie crumbs though, right? When they talked about some of the applications, dynamic pricing, recommendation engines, customer support. And by the way, we saw that with Ada, right? Ada powers a lot of these chatbots. Uh, process automation, QA system, digital asset catalogs, right? So. I think in the future, we're going to see some more definitive uh, conversations. It was great, by the way, it was great to have Ada up there basically saying MongoDB is the bedrock of what we're doing with AI and showing them, you know, showing not just, hey, stuff we're thinking about, but stuff that's actually uh, in process and in production. Yeah, I think that wraps it up pretty well, Pat. Uh, We've got a big day ahead. We'll be talking to MongoDB customers. We're going to be talking to MongoDB executives. And uh, you know, I think everybody out there hopefully spend some time with us, but good keynote. Any final words? 
No, I mean, I'm impressed. This is my first, I know this isn't MongoDB World, this is MongoDB Local, which by the way, the company went from one giant global event to uh, hitting 30, 30 cities events. and 19 countries. So events, it's, it's pretty good countries. to be here. I mean, it's lively, that's for sure. And it's good stuff and I'm looking forward to, to what the company has to say. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So everybody, you have it here for Patrick and myself for MongoDB Local. Now, you're gonna to have to stay with us because we have several more conversations. We've got executives, we've got partners, we've got customers. And Pat, I love when we get the customers on the show. It gives us a whole different the flavor. The and so, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully you hit that subscribe button, watch our other shows. If you catch them in order or out of order, I think it's gonna still be easy to stay with us and follow us, but we appreciate everybody tuning in to the 6.5, we're here on the road at MongoDB Local 2023 in New York City. Stay with us.